listening to that, Helmut Roper, hyphen the military analyst. Helmut, good afternoon to you. Um, this situation's been growing, frustration's been growing, people have been demanding money from government, they haven't been getting it. In a way, I suppose it's no surprise that this actually happened last night. Yeah, look, I think, but I think the first question to establish, or the first thing to establish is, who are actual former MK or APLA or whatever veterans, and who are people who are just trying, uh, opportunists trying, uh, trying their luck? And we, we saw that in Zimbabwe. And I see some of the, the supposed veterans prancing around in camouflage uniform at various occasions. A lot of them look rather too young to have ever been in MK, even if they're, they're teenagers. So we need to first weed them out. We need our weed out opportunists. The ones who actually, particularly those who went into exile for MK, they obviously should be looked after. Now, as I understood at the time, they were all given the option of joining the Defence Force. Those who didn't were given, or were supposed to be given, some sort of package. Now, those who chose not to go into the Defence Force and took a package, well, if they'd blown the package, they mustn't complain. They had their chance. Though, if there were some who were not given a package, were not given a settlement, who were supposed to, that's a whole different ballgame. Then, then we fall down, and, and that's, that's all of us. Is the guys on whichever side you want doesn't matter. They they went in exile for cause, and it was the real cause, and they need to be looked after. And if they haven't been looked after, then it's a major failing of government that needs to be addressed. The fact that people took a defence minister and a deputy defence minister and a presidency minister against their will, they're kidnapping people who play an important role in our state, and, in, and I must say this, in the military of our state. I mean, that's quite an incredible development. Look, yeah, the whole thing is really embarrassing, but I don't, you can't really link it to the Defence Forces, say. They, they weren't there at all. I mean, as a minister, sure. But it does, it does, to me, it actually calls into question whether these are genuine former MK people. Because the serious MK people I've, I've, had, I've dealt with over the years now, since 91, are are pretty disciplined. They don't they wouldn't they wouldn't do that sort of thing. So I have some doubts about who all was involved here. Um it may have been people who were just involved in internal unrest and claimed they were MK if they weren't. Um it may be a whole lot. But the whole thing does need to be addressed. I mean there's a, a related problem that there are a lot of former MK members in the Defence Force who can't be promoted because they went into exile without education. They never received the promised education. They can't be promoted. They're now overage and overweight and everything for the ranks they hold. Now, what do you do with them? Treasury keeps saying, kick them out. Well, you can't just toss them on the street. You can't do it practically, legally even. And you certainly can't do it ethics. Morally, you can't do that. But you've got to do something with them. So it's a wider problem than just MK veterans or who, who APLA veterans who are outside. There are also former MK and APLA people in the defense force who've got a problem as, as a similar result of the same situation. They also need to be looked after. At the moment, they just clutter up the defense force. They're too old and fat for the, the duties of, of their rank, but you can't throw them on the street and they cost money. So what do you do with them? And this is something we're not addressing. It just simply hasn't been addressed. Um, do you think something like this could happen again? I mean, we have promises today, promises of action. We've seen them all before. There's a whole department that's supposed to deal with this and clearly hasn't. Um, are we going to wake up one day and find that actually the situation's got even worse than it was last night? Look, you know, obviously, if, it's, if the matter is not dealt with, yes, it can happen again. If, if, I, if I'd gone into exile with MK and it's promised all sorts of things that didn't happen, I wouldn't be exactly happy. I'm not sure I'd go and hold a minister hostage, but I'd certainly be a very unhappy chap. Um, but again, as I say, we've got to first distinguish who's who in the zoo. Who are the genuine ones? Who are the pretenders? The, the, the ones who are just opportunists should get zapped. The ones who are genuine need to be looked after. I could have stepped out of line this time around, but if they're genuine, they still need to be looked after. Um, where the money is going to come from, of course, another, another one of those good questions. But somebody does need to do something about it. You can't just toss them in the street and expect them to, to put up with it. It can happen again. It will happen again. And I'm, that's one thing is good that it seems that the minister's protectors, for instance, it was all handled with pretty good good care. Nobody got overexcited. So that, that, that was good news, the way it was handled. But it shouldn't have happened. There is genuine risk of it happening again. And particularly if we don't weed out the opportunists. The real guys need to be dealt with, and I think you can identify them and then make a plan. The opportunists possibly basically need to be thrown in, thrown in the slammer for time being to discourage them from trying a second time. Helmut Roma, Heitman, thanks very much indeed. Military analyst joining us here on Newsfeed this afternoon.